attention is being paid to regional travel. Here's, here's how and what the OECS plans to do to address the challenges. The topic of regional air travel has been on the tongues of citizens and residents in the Caribbean, especially since the departure of Liat. During a panel discussion on the history, achievements and future of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States on Thursday, there is progress in streaming regional air travel, officials said. Director General of the OECS Headquarters, Dr. Didicus Jules, spoke of the measures that have been taken by the Eastern Caribbean Civil Aviation Authority. It has uh, one of the challenges that ECO faced in recent times was the downgrade of our airports. And that was res a result of a combination of several factors, the condition of some of our airports, and, but more importantly, in relation to the, the U.S. Civil Aviation Authority, it had to do with the, the, the legal requirements that ECO was managing on our behalf. Um, the, 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 the law, the law governing civil aviation in the Eastern Caribbean was a bit cumbersome. It required that every minister of civil aviation would have to agree to certain changes being made. And one of the requirements of the, the U.S. civil aviation was that there should be, um, a simplification of that process so that the director general of ECA would issue the regulations and thus be in a position very in a very agile manner to change those regulations to facilitate changes in the industry. He also spoke of the authority's ability to set prices for airfare as opposed to the Trinidad and Tobago Civil Aviation Authority. There are longer term strategic issues that need to be addressed by ECA. One of them is that our overflight fees and so on are managed by the Trinidad and Tobago Civil Aviation Authority. And I think the time is ripe for ECA having, once it regains that category, category one status, to begin to look at what we need to do to exercise full sovereignty on our, our airspace. Um, so that is going to be a challenge for the future. But once we do that, there are going to be huge opportunities for the OECS because it means a better management of our own airspace, further modernization of our airports. And most importantly, I believe that the Civil Aviation Authority can operate as a totally self-financing institution actually providing revenue for the further upgrade of our airport infrastructure. Taxes and landing fees have been a huge factor in the prices and Dr. Jules says addressing them is a quote relatively simple matter end quote. I think I mean the taxation thing is a simple matter of or relatively simple matter of governments making the decision that if we want to be competitive with our civil aviation we cannot afford to charge very high landing fees or passenger fees to airlines tra um, transporting people across the region and we've seen recently some governments have tried to reduce those costs. One of the things that we had done as an exercise in the OECS some time ago in order to convince well before the whole um, this, this departure of LIAT and so on was to do an actual animation showing the, the volume of flights across the region and to to create a simulation that showed the governments what the impact of a reduction of passenger fees would mean on air travel, because that would significantly increase the volume of air travel, and therefore what governments may lose from direct passenger fee revenue, they would gain from other economic spin-offs of the increase in air traffic. Dr. Didicus Jules, Director General of the OECS Headquarters, speaking during a panel discussion on Thursday night.